Love and monsters, you cheeky, cheeky boy. What am I going to do with you, huh? Alrighty, let's rank some David Tennant episodes before he comes back and messes up my entire list again. All of the episodes here are out of order. I don't know why that is the case, but I'll try and go in the normal order. New Earth. It was not that great. It was good. Okay. Okay. Damn, I'm starting off pretty harsh. But that's okay, because I'm crispy pro. Tooth and Claw, huh? Mmm. I really enjoyed that episode. It's quite scary for the time. I always thought the wolf was quite scary. So it's definitely above New Earth. Is it anything amazing? Not necessarily. You do get David Tennant in his normal Scottish accent, so I'll put it there for now, but it might be bumped down to a good. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. School reunion, you already know where it is. It's up there. Sarah Jane Smith, it's a it's a great episode. Really, really nice episode. Come on, you're joking, right? The girl in the fireplace, I always liked the villains in this. I thought David was great. I think she's controversial now, so I don't really know. It, it is one of Moffat's good scripts. He has a lot of good scripts, what am I saying? So I will put it as fantastic. I don't think it's the greatest of all time, but it's pretty damn good. Rise of the Cybermen, I really enjoyed this two-parter. Um, I think it's great. I love what they do with um, Jackie's character. I love what they do with Rose. Um, so I'm going to put it in good. I reckon they're both on par with each other. They're good episodes. They are really good episodes. It kind of deals with, you know, the multiverse, and that's all the rage these days anyway. The Idiot's Lantern, not one of the best, I don't think. I'm hungry. Not hungry for this episode, though. Sorry, you're okay. You're okay. The Impossible Planet and Satan Pit. I always really, really enjoyed those episodes. I think the villains are creepy, the Ood are great, and Shooty has said so far that these two are his favorite episodes of Doctor Who, so there you go. Love and monsters, you cheeky, cheeky boy. What am I going to do with you, huh? I don't think it's as bad as everyone says it is. I think there's been kind of a love and monsters renaissance, um, so. I dare I say I put it in good. I probably enjoy Love and Monsters more than I do New Earth and The Idiot's Lantern. Is that controversial? I don't know. Also, I should definitely mention that I have linked to this tier list in the description below. So if you guys want to give it a go, do that. And you can take a screenshot and send it my way on Twitter at CrispyPro. I would love to see what you guys come up with because I feel like we might have different opinions and that's okay. Also, while I've got you here, don't be afraid to subscribe. The YouTube algorithm has been all sorts of weird lately. So I would appreciate you guys subscribing so that we can stay on top and get to a million billion subscribers. Now, here's an episode that is probably my least favorite in all of Doctor Who Fear Her. It never really did anything for me, so I'm sorry, but that's going in the bad. Alrighty, Army of Ghosts and Doomsday. I mean, come on, those two are iconic. The Daleks, the Cybermen, the, the tears that I had during these episodes, unreal. So I'm gonna put Army of Ghosts as fantastic, but purely because of that beach scene, Doomsday deserves to be up there with the goats. I mean, it's iconic Doctor Who. That scene has been parodied so many times. And by no one more than me. Series two is done. And look at that. It looks like kind of a mixed bag, but you know, mainly positive. I think series two might have been my least favorite David Tennant series. I'm interested to see where we go from here, especially for series four. I completely forgot a Christmas invasion, which I think is is just good. There we go. That's fine. The Runaway Bride. I think this is a really fun time. I know a lot of people weren't a big fan of Catherine Tate at the time um, because I think, you know, in, in this episode, she is, gets a little bit on the annoying side, but, you know, Series 4 definitely is the, one of the best redemption arcs of any character in Doctor Who. So, Runaway Bride, I think you're, you're good as well. You're fine. We have Smith and Jones. What a banging episode. I don't know whether to put it in fantastic or go. We have the introduction of Martha Jones. We introduce the iconic villain, the Jadoon, um, and there is a vampire that uses a silly straw. So what What more do you want? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but where to put it? Where to put it? I'm going to say fantastic. All right, and then we have the Shakespeare Code. But I think it's a fine episode. It's probably just good, right? I don't think it's... It's not really classified as one of these ones, is it? No. The Shakespeare Code. That's where I'll put you. And then we have one of the most underrated episodes, I think, Gridlock. I think Gridlock is quite a good episode. I watched it not too recently, and I had a great time with it. I love the really enclosed setting, so I'm going to put it in Fantastic. That's where you belong. Good job, Gridlock. Mommy don't know that he's getting hurt at the body shop. Doing something on
All right, and now we have two of my least favorite Dalek stories, the Daleks in Manhattan evolution of the Daleks, even though these episodes do have the werewolf Andrew Garfield. So I... They're okay. They're passable. They're very, very passable episodes, but I, I never really enjoyed either of them. So... Where is the Lazarus experiment? I can't even... I feel like I'm having a really hard time finding... There it is. Hello. Um, I love I love David Tennant in a suit. I think it's, uh, it's a good episode, no matter what people say about the CGI. 42, huh? Chibbers. Chibbers at it again. Um, I think this episode is just okay. Very run-of-the-mill. Um, I like what it does for Martha's character, but apart from that... I don't know, it's a very forgettable story in my opinion. Human Nature, Family of Blood, I mean, these two episodes I loved as a kid. I love the idea of the Doctor, you know, disguising themselves as human. I know this episode is quite controversial now, but I think it's an excellent piece of writing. Freema Adjaman's performance in this is top notch, so you know what, I'm gonna put both in fantastic. Are they go- oh, they might be. I don't know. I'll reevaluate at the end, okay? I don't know if they're going to be in GOAT or Fantastic, but for now, you're in Fantastic. And then we have one of the best reviewed episodes, Blink. Um, they did not expect this episode to be a success, but my goodness, it was. It introduced one of the most iconic Doctor Who villains to date. I think the Weeping Angels might be one of the only villains that are on par, like, recognition-wise with the Daleks and the Cybermen. If you talk to someone on the street and say, oh, what do you know about uh, Doctor Who? They say, oh, there's like those, those weird like tin guys with the plunger and uh, those statues that move plus it is a brilliant story which is so funny because this episode is very much Dr. Light because you know the last time we had a Dr. Light episode we got the love and monsters and that was just subpar but this was absolutely exceptional so you my friend are going in the goat and then we have a killer three-part finale, and my goodness, as, as a kid, I loved watching this episode for the first time because I had zero idea that this was going to be a three-parter because, you know, I only started watching with the Matt Smith era, so I, did, I got these DVDs and was like, all right, let's see what happens, and wow. But because of that, I think all three episodes deserve to be in Fantastic. I think they are all very, very good. I mean, the ending of The Last of the Time Lords, where, you know, he becomes Space Jesus, Kind of out of nowhere, but I, I like the idea that the entire human race uses the satellite. Whatever. Whatever. It's fine. It's Doctor Who. I don't care. It's gr it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Don't judge me. Okie dokie. Series 3 is done. I mean, look at that. I mean, Fantastic is filling up, and I get the feeling it's going to fill up a little bit more. But now, of course, we have The Voyage of the Damned, which is, you know, an episode that features Australia's own Kylie Minogue, and I think is still the most viewed Doctor Who episode on watch, for New Who at least. But the quality of the episode, I think I think it's pretty fantastic. We'll put, we'll put it up there. I think um, Kylie crushes it, of course. I love the setting of it on this space Titanic. Um, so of course it's gonna crash. I mean, it, it was brilliant. It was absolutely fantastic. All right, we have finally made it to series four. What a, what an exciting time, huh? A very exciting time. Start off with Partners in Crime and we get the reintroduction of Donna Noble. And this episode does a lot of work to make us like Catherine Tate's Donna Noble. And it works, absolutely. So I can't really fault this episode. The Adipose as villains is such a goofy concept and it made so much merchandise. So I will, I don't know if it deserves a goat. I might put it in fantastic. I might put it in fantastic for now. The Fires of Pompeii, of course, introduces us to Amy Pond and the 12th Doctor. I always had a soft spot for this episode because it deals with the whole fixed point in time. You know, the Doctor's like, I can't, I can't really do much here. So I really, really like that. I don't know if it's a goat. I don't think it's a goat. We're going to go fantastic. Okay, we're going to go fantastic. Planet of the Ood, I am a sucker for an Ood story. Okay, I love it. But I think it's a really good story and an important story to tell. So, gosh, I can't just put every story in fantastic. Because I feel like most of David Tennant's run, especially, like, are not the greatest of all time, but my goodness, they're, they're just consistently good or above average. Um, so Planet of the Ud will go there. Okay, now we have the Sontaran Stratagem. I always say Sontarans wrong. I say Zontarans, but it's Sontaran Stratagem and the other one with all the cars with the Atmos. So I'll put them in good. I'll put them in 
I'll put them in good. The poison sky right there. I, I will say, I will say with those two, I really did enjoy the, the inclusion of Wilf in those episodes. I, I've, I mean, I will say it forever. Wilf is one of the best companions in Doctor Who and rest in peace, Bernard Cribbins. You're an absolute legend. The Doctor's Daughter. What a quirky story. This one's really weird. I feel like a lot of people say that this one's the worst episode. You're absolutely wrong. This episode is a really, really fun time. So she literally was the Doctor's Daughter who married the Doctor and she was in an episode called The Doctor's Daughter. It doesn't it doesn't make any sense, but you know what it is. It's bloody fantastic. So there you go This is probably a really boring list because I just keep putting every episode in fantastic, but I don't care It's my channel. I can do what I want. Okay, don't judge me the unicorn and the wasp I know a lot of people will probably say that this one too is a low point of series four I disagree. This was one of my favorite episodes growing up because I'm a sucker for your, your Poirots and your Agatha Christie mysteries So to have the doctor meet Agatha Christie and do the whole Cluedo thing. I mean, my bread and butter, but I understand that some people it might not be their bread and butter, but I really enjoyed their play on the genre um, So guess what take a shot every time I put it in fantastic. There you go Okay, now we get some heavy hitters with the silence in the library and forest of the dead I think they are great stories. So because of that. Oh boy. They're not just fantastic They are some of the greatest of all time. They are some of the greatest of all time That is a very very good two-parter and I don't care what you guys have to say. I'm kidding, I do. Please leave some comments. Midnight here, and this episode is one of the best uses of a single set story that I have ever seen in any TV ever. I know some people aren't the biggest fan of this one because it's just, you know, people shouting at each other for 40 minutes, but I think it's just an excellent, excellent character study and very Lord of the Flies-esque. So, ooh, do I put it in Fantastic or Goat? This is, this is a moral dilemma for me. I'm going to say, oh, goat, whatever, whatever. Oh, I might regret that. And now of course we have turn left, which is Doctor Who's answer to the Marvel What If series. I don't think it's in goat territory, but I think it is fantastic. Billy Piper in this is great. Catherine Tate in this is absolutely fantastic, as you can see right there. Stolen Earth, Journey's End. I mean, what a insane finale. Doctor Who goes full Avengers Endgame on us, and it's the most satisfying thing. We haven't had a massive team up like that in forever. Are they goats? Are they goats? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay. I'll put them there. I'll put them there for now. I don't know. I, it, they should literally be on the line, I think. I think. I mean, Davros, yeah, for sure. Put him in goats, whatever. Okie dokies. And then we get to the tenant specials. Yeah, we've done it. We've made it this far. Where am I going to put it at the end of time? I don't know. Next Doctor, as I've said a million times before, this episode was just clickbait. A lot of people thought we were going to get the next Doctor in that it was David Morrissey, but alas, it was not. Um, it's an okay story. I just said okay, so should I, I was going to put it in good, but I just said okay. Ooh, is that harsh? It's one of the weaker Christmas specials, right? Whatever. Sorry, you're in okay. I need to balance this list out. I mean, David Tennant's era can't be that good, can it? Yes, it can. It very much can. Planet of the Dead, the first episode out of all of these ones right here to be filmed in high definition. I mean, Doctor Who were really late to the game there. Torchwood was filmed in high definition the whole way through. And on rewatch, it shows now. You know, these episodes are dated just a little bit. But what was Doctor Who's first outing in HD like? It was... All right. <coughs> you can go... You can go there. You can go there. I really liked Lady Christine. I think that was her name. Um, but it's an alright story. It's fun. I love the location shooting, but whatever. Waters of Mars, huh? Ooh -wee. Um, if you want a good guest cast, that's the one. If you want a good villain, that's the one. If you want one of David Tennant's best performances as the Doctor, that is the one. This is such a good story. Such a good story. Absolutely love it. And so you know what that means. It's just okay. I'm kidding. It's a gosh damn goat. Baby. Oh my goodness, we have made it to the end of times part one and two, also known as one of the best Doctor Companion duos ever in the 10th Doctor and Wilf. I mean, come on. John Sim is back, and I mean, the last 10 minutes of the end of time part two is very much, you know, a nostalgia play, but it feels like the end of the entire uh, 10th Doctor's era, and it's so beautifully wrapped up. 
So I will put both of these in fantastic. I think the episodes have their flaws. But you know what? I am pretty happy with this list. I am pretty, looking at that now, I am pretty happy with this list. As I said, send me a screenshot at Crispy Pro on Twitter. I would love to see your tier lists. Um, and also let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite David Tennant story? And what is your least favorite David Tennant story? I wanna know. I wanna know what the people say. You might really disagree with me. Please like this video. Please subscribe if you have not already. And I'll see you very, very soon. Allons-y! Do we sound big on oh.